We're really excited because people will just be able to just fully immerse yourself in the maps and the storylines and the heroes. With the new seasonal model, we'll be able to drop a ton of content in very frequently as we're updating the game through these big seasonal drops. We're looking at releasing heroes every other season and then a map in between those. And on top of that, we're looking at dropping a ton of content involving skins and other great goodies for players to get their hands on for each seasonal drop. We have so much that we want to do in Overwatch to develop this game because we think it's the next step for us. We think there is so much more we could bring. I'm really happy moving to our new seasonal based schedule, making this really huge commitment to regular updates. It's exciting at the same time because I know what this team can do. We really want players to be able to anticipate when things are going to enter the game. With all the new content and events coming in, it's even more important to just make sure that everybody knows what's coming. And along with the free-to-play change, we're doing away with loot boxes entirely. We have a new Battle Pass model coming in, and we have a store as well, so the players will have a lot more control about how they interact with the game and how they acquire new content. We've been working on so many things over the past couple of years. I'm most excited for folks to see some of the new heroes that we've been kind of cooking up. It's a bunch of different reasons why we choose to make a hero. We're trying to follow the narrative, pick the hero that makes sense, or do we need to create a hero that answers this meta, counters a certain strategy that's too strong in the game? We've got two more supports and another tank in just the first couple of seasons, and we're still working on new characters for a year, year and a half down the line as well. There's characters that folks have already seen glimpses of in the story, and there's also characters that you've never seen before, never heard about. We were looking at making sure the new heroes fit within this new, very fast-paced paradigm and less shields and crowd control. You can see a lot of that reflected in team play moments, but with a much faster pace vibe. We want to push the sci-fi, the futuristic feeling of maps. There's a touch of sci-fi everywhere you look, so this is something that was a bit more subtle in Overwatch 1. We really want players to feel that the world takes place in not so distant future. Coming up next is Rio. Rio, a new PvP map. Pretty sure everybody's gonna love that one as well. It's a great map. It's close to the team. Many people on the team are from Brazil, so it was kind of fun to inject the culture, the colors, the vibe into this map. There's a map that takes place in Portugal. This map is pretty close to the team because our lead environment artist, he's from Portugal. People from the location should really get a sense that we've done a ton of research and we were very inspired, and I think we captured it pretty beautifully in the game. It is a push map, one of the newest game modes, and we tried some pretty interesting layouts for this one, so we hope the players like it. We definitely want the game to feel like a globe-trotting adventure. There's new types of content from what you're used to in Overwatch 1. We have charms, we have banners. The current Mythic skin that's in the works, that I worked on actually, is for Genji. He's got this kind of cyberpunk Japanese demonic theme. Mythic skins are meant to be this next tier of skins above Legendary. We want players to be able to go in there and pick and choose certain pieces meant to be this extra awesome Legendary skin that you can customize. We're concurrently developing quite a few Mythic skins. They're gonna be released over the seasons. All this amazing stuff, all of the amazing skins. For Weapon Charms, really what we're looking for there is just for the players to be able to express themselves and dress their character up. One of our core tenets on Overwatch visually is to focus a lot on the first person view. We want you to be able to see it and enjoy it while you're playing the game. One thing that was really important to us was to make sure that players, if they earn anything in the game anywhere, that they're able to use it everywhere. So if you earn something on console or on PC or on Overwatch 1, you can always use it in anywhere in Overwatch 2 as well. And with each new season, there'll be a ton of new content and a new battle pass as well. These seasonal updates will allow us to be constantly infusing the game with new content, new heroes, new maps, so the game is going to feel fresh just all the time. There's always going to be something for you to do or to work towards. There's never going to be a point where you're like, gosh, I don't have anything to do. Being able to provide players with new heroes every so often, new maps. It is going to be a growing and evolving game. There's so much for us to explore as we move forward. Get ready. It's going to be really exciting, really fun. With both PvP and PvE, there's going to be really great content for you to immerse yourself in and continue to play over and over again with your friends. Now or never. We can't wait for October 4th. We're just excited to be back. You mentioned that PvE is coming in 2023. Now, can you tell us how the development is going and why the team is committed to bringing these type of experiences into Overwatch? We're all so invested in the world of Overwatch and, and the heroes that live in it. 
And through the years, we've developed cinematics, animated shorts, and graphic novels for our players who just want to get deeper into the lore. With PvE, we have an opportunity to go a step further, to go deeper into diverse storytelling in ways that we really just haven't been able to before. So we are planning to expand the Overwatch universe through these seasons that we just described, and we will start delivering this PvE gameplay in 2023. PvE will be delivered through the live service, and that means we'll be able to deliver and tell more Overwatch stories and create more opportunities to experience our heroes. Here's a sneak peek at what we're working on. The team's goal for PvE in Overwatch 2 is to basically move the overall story of Overwatch 4. We've told a lot of short stories along the way. There are a lot of to be continues. It's time for us to answer those questions, close off some of those stories, ask new questions. So the new game will definitely move the overall canon of the lore of Overwatch 4. Get those doors open! For the PvP live service, for certain seasons, you're also going to get some PvE maps. You'll be fighting Null Sector in at least some of the maps. They've come back and they're mad, so it's Overwatch's job to take them out. There's going to be content for you to immerse yourself in and continue to play over and over again. A lot of the older guys from the original Overwatch team, they're coming back but they need help with some of the younger generation like Brigitte and Lucio. So we're going to tell the story of how Overwatch basically gets back together. Another thing we want to do with uh, the story is to showcase more of where the characters are from. For example, Torbjorn is from Gothenburg. Players will get a chance to see what Torbjorn's factory looks like. You can play PvE with your friends and immerse yourself in the world and stay inside of it a little bit longer.